And we have Dr. Lucy Jones on the phone with us here. Dr. Lucy, what can you tell us about this 5.1 earthquake that struck in the South Bay? Well, you, you may very well have heard this. It does appear to have occurred on the Calaveras Fault down near Alam Raw, which means that people in San Jose would have felt it much more strongly than people part, you know, up in San Francisco or Oakland or in the more northern parts of the Bay Area. Um, it was followed by two aftershocks so far, which is on the lower side of our distribution of aftershocks, so maybe this is a pretty small aftershock sequence. When, uh, when, a, when a ma an earthquake of this magnitude hits, uh, like you said, folks there uh, close to the epicenter are obviously going to feel it a lot stronger, but many of us felt it for quite a long while. Can you talk to me about uh, the, what exactly happens for it to last longer than, than uh, just a short jolt and shake? Okay, well, there's a couple of different things that we're talking about here is duration and the frequency distribution. So the Earth produces energy by flipping, just like imagine ripping a piece of paper. You can hear as you rip down the paper, every part you rip gives off a little shaking, gives off of, of the air. When you slip on the fall, it begins at an epicenter or hypocenter, and then it grows over some surface. And as this, this rupture front passes through down the surface, Every point is giving off energy. Hmm. So, and, the, and, and therefore, the bigger the area, the bigger the earthquake. So a big earthquake is happening over a larger surface, but also for a longer time because it takes time for this rupture front to move down the fault. Right. So that's one thing. Now, a magnitude 5 is not that big. The fault may be a kilometer or two across, and the total rupture would be on the order of a second or so. Okay. So the earthquake itself was not producing energy for very long. But now the waves travel from that fall out through the rock. And if you're nearby, you feel all of that energy coming off, and it's a very sharp motion. As the waves travel, the high frequencies die off more quickly than the low frequencies. So just like think of a boombox going down the street. You know, when they're a long ways away, all you hear is the bass notes. That's the long period energy traveling farther. So when you're as far away as San Francisco, only that long period motion's left, but it also has been bouncing around off all the different surfaces that are actually in there on the earth, the faults and the different rock boundaries and the surface of the earth. And you get sort of a, a reverberation that continues. We call it a coda. And the duration of the coda goes with the magnitude because you've got more energy bouncing around. So when you have that Flow, that rolling motion going on for a while, you know it's a pretty big earthquake. You also know it's pretty far away. Dr. Lucy Jones, thank you for explaining that to us because that has been definitely the consistent uh, comment that we've been hearing from people that it definitely was more of a roll than a jolt and shake. And I really appreciate you explaining that to our viewers. That is all the time we have. Uh, for